Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be discussing the stimulation methods used in motor evoked potentials, also known as MEPs. I'm going to be focusing on the techniques used to elicit MEPs, the parameters that influence stimulation, and their significance in clinical and surgical applications. Some background, what are motor evoked potentials or MEPs? Motor evoked potential is a technique that's used to activate motor pathways via external stimulation of the brain or the spinal cord. MEPs are primarily used in research, diagnostics, and intraoperative neuromonitoring, or IONM. MEP stimulation is essential for monitoring and evaluating motor pathways. It helps to assess the integrity of the corticospinal tract. By delivering electrical or magnetic stimulation, we can assess motor function and ensure the safety of neural structures and prevent motor deficits during high-risk surgery. There are two primary methods that are used for MEP stimulation, TMS and TES. TMS, or transcranial magnetic stimulation, uses electromagnetic induction to create an electrical field in the motor cortex. Due to its non-invasive nature, TMS is commonly preferred in research and motor assessment. The one that we are going to be focusing on is transcranial electrical stimulation, or TES. In this case, direct electrical currents are applied to the scalp via electrodes. TES is preferred in surgical settings due to its reliability in detecting motor pathway disruptions. This is because it, detect it produces stronger responses. Additionally, Transcranial motor evoked potentials have been used during many different procedures which place the spinal cord or its vascular supply at risk. These can include orthopedic surgeries such as spinal deformities or thoracic trauma or fracture or tumors, or cervical spine surgeries for decompressive and stabilization purposes. They also can include neurological surgery, for example, intramedullary and intradural spinal cord masses, subcortical tumor resection, cerebral aneurysm obliteration, AVM obliteration, and tethered cord release. In vascular surgeries, such as abdominal aortic aneurysms or carotid endorectomy, CEA surgeries, Additionally, it can be used in interventional procedures such as aneurysm coiling, intracranial aneurysm embolization, spinal AVM surgeries. However, care must be taken when using MEP stimulation for certain patients. For example, children under two years old, patients with a history of seizures, patients that have pacemakers, patients that have cochlear implants, and patients containing deep brain stimulators. The effectiveness of MEP stimulation depends on properly setting parameters and accurately targeting the motor cortex. The TCEMP stimulation parameters are as follows. The duration is between 50 to 75 microseconds. The pulse train is one to nine pulses, but for spinal cases, it's five to seven. The interstimulus interval, or ISI, is 2 to 5 milliseconds. The frequency is 200 to 500 hertz. And the intensity is adjusted until muscle responses, also known as myogenic responses, are generated, or it reaches 600 volts. So the stimulation intensity is adjusted based on individual motor thresholds. Following the stimulation of the cerebral cortex, it takes approximately three milliseconds to the peak of an excitatory postsynaptic potential, also known as an EPSP, in a spinal motor neuron. Additionally, stimulation rates of less than 200 hertz are needed for temporal summation at motor neuron membranes. The pulse configurations can be as follows. Single pulse, which are used for basic motor threshold assessments, paired pulse, which are typically used when studying cortical excitability, and train of five, which is used in surgery for stronger activation. I've included a, gra a graph here that depicts two, three, and four pulse trains at different muscle lengths. Electrode placement is crucial for effective stimulation. Standard electrode placement in MEPs is C3 and 4 on the scalp, depicted here on the left. 
Using C3 and 4 ensures bilateral motor activation, which means that it activates both upper and lower extremity muscles. Alternative sites depicted below, like C1 and C2, may be used depending on surgical needs. Additionally, the preferred electrodes during MEP are corkscrew electrodes. This is because they have lower impedance and they have more stability in their placement. MEP relies on many mechanisms, one of which is temporal stimulation, in which repeated pulses are delivered in order to increase neural excitability. They do this by increasing the likelihood of neuronal activation. Within MEP, the cortical spinal tract is the primary pathway that is studied. Cortical neurons, which is, are depicted on the left, are nerve cells that are located in the cerebral cortex. They are responsible for processing and transmitting information throughout the brain and nervous system. The most relevant cortical neurons are pyramidal neurons, which are depicted here on the most right-hand side of the left image, particularly those found in layer 5 of the motor cortex. Excitatory neurons are responsible for projecting to the brain stem, the spinal cord, and other cortical areas. MEP stimulation targets these neurons to activate motor pathways. Transcranial electrical stimulation, TES, and transcranial magnetic stimulation, TMS, directly or indirectly excite these pyramidal neurons, leading to signal transmission down the cortical spinal tract depicted here. Lastly, MEP is reliant on threshold-based response. This means that intensity is gradually increased in order to re reach a reliable motor response. While MEP is a powerful stimulation tool, a lot of factors can affect the accuracy of the results. Variability in responses due to patient factors such as age, medication, or fatigue following surgeries can affect the results. Additionally, small variations in electrode positioning can alter MEP responses. Additionally, interference from artifacts, also known as signal noise, can affect the interpretation of MEP responses. Because of this, the interpreter needs to be highly skilled in interpreting these responses to ensure that there are no false positives or false negatives. Lastly, anesthesia can have effects on stimulation. I've included a chart here of various anesthetic drugs and their effects on MEP latency and amplitude. For example, sevoflurane increases latency and decreases amplitude. Nitrous oxide increases latency and decreases amplitude. Fentanyl and remifentanyl, because they are delivered differently, they have preserved latency effects and slight depression on MEP amplitude and a decrease on MEP amplitude, respectively. Lastly, propofol, which is commonly used, is increased effects on latency and decreased effects on amplitude and should be used in dose-dependent circumstances. Additionally, nitrous oxide has been noted as uh, should be avoided due to its strong effect on MEPs. Proper patient management, careful anesthesia selection, and optimal electrode placement can help to mitigate some of these challenges. MEP stimulation provides essential insights into motor functions and ensures patient safety during surgery. Thank you for your attention.